Okay, let's continue. I think there was some issues with the audio, but I believe this is resolved by now. Um, we're going to see what are the key master data used in the shopping carts or low value acquisitions, which is basically the storage location and plant. One sec, I'm having some issues. To see when we have a need for goods, when to use items that are issued from inventory and where going, when to use items, uh, when to procure items from commercial vendors. Then we're going to review what are the roles involved in the requisitioning process. We're going to see what are the key master data used for shopping carts on and low value acquisitions, which are basically the storage location and plant and the product ID. These three um, master data are very, very important uh, in the creation of the shopping carts and low value POs. And we are going to see how to do it in the system. So you will see that is not the changes are not really big with respect to what you have been doing during the past years. So what we're going to do is to raise a shopping cart for inventory raise a shopping cart with items that are um, categorized as assets. They begin with product IDs uh, that start with 21. And we're going to see how to raise a low value PO. So this is you working in your office and then you have a need for the purchase of goods. So there are, and then you ask yourself how to process, how to proceed. Okay, so there are different options. The first option that you should explore is to get the items from inventory, from stock, meaning that these items have been purchased pre previously. There was a PO sent to the vendor and the items arrived to the mission. You did r &I and the items are already available. So you want to explore as first option the possibility of using the items that are already in your uh, storage location or plant and then if they are not or they are not enough you will the second option that you will consider is to acquire them by a procurement process so what do we mean uh, by acquiring from inventory or from stock there are different options if the items that you request are in the same location as you are what you can do is to create a reservation and execute goods issue. One sec, I'm going to hide this. One sec. The next option is that the items are in different location to with respect to where you are. So it could be that you need to, or the or your office, or, or there is a need in for intermission stock transfer, or intermission stock transfer. So there is an option of transferring the stock within the mission from another section sector, or uh, from another different mission. And um, bear in mind that the requisitioner or low value acquisitioner, they are not involved in the inter intermission stock transfer or intermission stock transfer. So if this is the preferred um, option, you will not be involved in that process. But you will be in the, uh, involved in the process of acquiring, acquiring the items via procurement, and then you have different options, raising a shopping cart or creating a low value PO. Okay, so these are the possible scenarios whenever you have a need for a good. <clears throat> uh, this is a little note in order to remind you that uh, in order to make to help you to make the decision whether to uh, acquire the, the items from inventory or from an external vendor, there is a report in ECC um, on the stock overview.
Reservation versus shopping cart or low value acquisition. As said, you will not be involved in the process of intermission stock transfer or intermission stock transfer, but you will be involved in the process of reservation, uh, shopping cart and low value PO. So <clears throat> there will be a point where you have to decide whether create a reservation or raise a shopping cart low or low value acquisition. So there are different four differences and one similarity between the two, and we're going to see it. So a reservation is created to request uh, goods, material, not services, that are already in inventory, in stock, in your mission. Um, and like that, our shopping cart or low value are created to request goods or materials that are not currently in the inventory uh, on stock. We are acquiring them brand new from the vendor. The reservation is approved by the inventory user role and the shopping cart low value is approved by the certifying officer roles. The reservation is created in Umoja ECC is one of the components of Umoja, while the shopping cart and low value is created in Umoja SRM component. And here is the similarity. Both of them refer, make reference to a product ID from the material master data. So product ID selection is important in both processes. So here we have uh, an overview of the roles and the transactions that are involved in the process. So up to 30, 30th of January, there was the role of SA.01, but it has been decommissioned. So as a result, it has been broken down or two new roles are covering what uh, the role SA1, um, SA01A and SA01B uh, was doing previously. So now we have SA02, which is requisitioner direct procurement, and the transactions they perform is first to check in ECC the report on um, stock levels overviews. Okay. So they will check the inventory availability report prior requisitioning in order to decide whether goods are to be requested through reservations or shopping carts. And then they can create shopping cart for inventory items and then they can create as well reservations. So after the decommissioning of the role SA01, it has been granted the role SA19 which is uh, a role in order to create shopping carts for consultants and individual contractors. Okay. And then, in order to create low value acquisitions, the user needs to have a combination of two roles, SA08 plus SA02. SA08 is the role for low value acquisitioner, but in order to, to be able to request the items for inventory, the same person need to have both roles, a combination of both roles. This is the way it, it is set uh, as of now. Okay. So if you are invited into this WebEx, is because you either have the role of SA02, Requisitioner Direct Procurement, or uh, the role of SA02 and the role of SA08, Low Value Acquisitioner. If you need to raise shopping carts or low value and you are not able to do it uh, in Umoja, it's because you don't have either of these roles and you need to talk to your supervisor, your SLO, and request the roles. So currently, as I said earlier, for a low value acquisitioner to be able to purchase for inventory, it needs to be assigned together the role SA08 together with the role SA02. So what are the key elements in shopping carts or low value? Very important is the correct, correct selection of the product ID. And then it's also very important the decision whether to purchase for inventory, which in Umoja terms it's called direct material, and the key element in this case will be the plant and the storage location. 
or if we decide to purchase for consumption and then the key elements will be the account assignment information that can be either internal order work breakdown structure element WBSE or unfunded shopping cards so remember unfunded shopping cards unfunded account assignment is used for RFX processes request for quotation ITB uh, request for proposal and of course since it's not charging any um, fund center the items are not going for inventory it's just for uh, for the purpose of initiating an RFP process So if you are a requisitioner or low value acquisitioner, you have two ways to search and select the appropriate product ID. As you know, nothing changes. The first one will be by using SRM. So when you are selecting, there are different ways of finding the correct product ID in SRM, and I'm sure that you are aware of it and how to use it. Another option is to um, go into ISIC and to search for the Material Master um, search tool. It is updated periodically. The last update is dates of 23rd of February. And it has all the material and service product ID. I recommend you to go in ISIC and check the Excel directly not to save it in your desktop because you may miss the last update of the product IDs. Also, if you are a requisitioner and yes, you may have access to SRM, but you may want to advise uh, other colleagues who doesn't have a role in SRM on product ID to tell them to make sure that the product ID they manage uh, are existing already in Umoja, so you may want to recommend them to go into ISIC and to familiarize themselves with the tool. <clears throat> so, speaking about product IDs, these are the list of the different product IDs with the different behaviors they have in the system. So, we have fixed assets, which are the 21 series product IDs, equipment, uh, supplies not serialized, medical supplies that begin with 16, etc. Umoja is going to behave differently at the stage of creating shopping carts and low value. If you are selecting a 21 series corresponding to a fixed asset, or if you are selecting the rest of the product IDs. So that's why in the index I mentioned that we are going to see a demo of creating a shopping cart for inventory and a demo of creating a shopping cart for fixed assets because the process changes slightly, not much. So I, we said another key element in creating the shopping cart and low value is the decision on whether the items are going to be procured for inventory or for consumption. So what does it mean? What does it mean to procure for inventory? In Umoja term is to procure direct material. Let's see some of the impacts. The material will go into inventory after the goods receipt. So eventually the item will end up in the warehouse. And then the item will be issued from inventory and will be subject to serialization, maintenance, assignment to a staff or to a functional location, return to stock, physical verification, counting and controlling, write-off, intra and intermission transfers, meaning all the process that are in Umoja. If the item is set for inventory at the stage of the shopping cart, the item can um, the life of the item can be tracked and managed by using Umoja. And then another impact of selecting the item for inventory is the accounting details are derived. So what we have to do is just to verify that they are correct. 
If we decide that the items are set for consumption, which is the defaulted option in Umoja, then we will have another behavior and another impact in the system. Um, the material will be expensed automatically after the goods received, meaning the material is like consumed. We will not be able to track, to track the life of the material after RNI is done. We will not be able to serialize, we will not be able to, to assign to a staff, to return to stock, to conduct physical verification, etc. Uh, no additional goods issue is required. And then the requisitioner will have to select one of the following options as accounting details, either if it's going to be funded by an internal order or a WBS, uh, a project, basically. And it's very important because this decision whether to acquire an whether to acquire acquire items for inventory or for consumption is to be made at this stage and it's not reversible, meaning that if you create a shopping cart and then you decide or you realize that there was a mistake, uh, you cannot amend it. You cannot amend it at the stage of the goods receipt or later on. What you have to do is to create a new shopping cart, to delete the, the shopping cart that is incorrect and create one from scratch. That's why it's a key element in the shopping cart. So, for example, <clears throat> it's, I have heard many times some sentences such as, um, I need a printer right away, so um, create a low value acquisition for consumption because I need it now. This sentence is a little bit misleading because uh, the, the printed, all the items actually need to be purchased for inventory, regardless if you need them right away or they are going to be sitting in the warehouse for a while. Everything, everything needs to be purchased for inventory, with a very few exceptions, such as newspapers and very few others that will be set for consumption. The rest, it needs to be purchased for inventory. So the fact that you need something right away doesn't mean that it's for consumption. It needs to go to inventory in Umoja, and then you will uh, use it right away. Elena, can I just um, interrupt at this point? So another, speaking about the key elements in creating shopping carts and low value is the plant and storage location selected. So the storage location represents the location at which the items will be inventoried. And the fund center that owns the item. Hold on, because I think, one sec, we have Emma Grant with us and she would like to comment. Um, thanks, Elena. Can you hear me? Okay, um, she's speaking. Okay, let me see because one sec, Emma, um, you are muted, so I need to unmute <coughs> all. Yes, Emma. Hello? <coughs> ah. <coughs> me? Can you hear me, Elena? <coughs> One sec, please. I'm trying to make Emma um, unmuted. Hmm? Okay, my col <laughs> my colleague my colleague Brian is informing me that everybody can hear Emma except myself. So 
apologize for this. you but the rest of us can so just proceed Brian you can hear me now yes Brian should I proceed can I, can you hear me Um, I'll just go ahead because I believe that the audience can um, hear what I'm saying. Um, just before Elena goes on, um, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, we have not changed the process, the business process, um, when we're creating shopping carts from moving from Galileo to Emoja. Um, all we're doing is we're reconfirming that everything you purchase goes into inventory. And there are very, very few exceptions. The issue is that um, many of you before might not have realized what happened in Galileo after the fact. But everything is purchased for inventory, is received in, into inventory, and then issued out. And as Elena said, there are a couple of exceptions. For those of you that work in CITS, crypto equipment is an exception because we never received it and managed it in Galileo. But everything else... Um, is is treated um, as inventory and received in and then um, issued out, even if it's for immediate consumption. Obviously, Elena also said the example of newspapers. Um, we really don't feel um, that you are ever going to need to manage and track um, your newspapers. They will just be purchased and, and issued directly. But everything else, there is no excuse and, and no exceptions. So you need to ensure... Um, that everything is purchased for inventory at the shopping cart level. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you so much for your participation. Much appreciated. So, yes, I am... I think there is no need to re-emphasize how much it's important is to set the items for inventory and uh, as a consequ consequence of that, how, how important the correct selection of the storage location and product ID um, becomes. So, let me continue. Currently, the storage location is pre-populated based on your user profile. But in case of those of you who are linked to more than one storage location, meaning that you will be able to raise shopping carts and low value for more than one storage location, the system will just randomly default to one of them. So it becomes very important to pay attention to the storage location that is defaulted and to make the change if required. As each storage location is linked to only one fund center, then the system is able to identify what is the fund center linked to the storage location selected by you. It's important uh, for you to understand what is the enterprise organization structure, meaning how your mission in terms of plant and storage location has been designed in Umoja terms. This is an example for the mission MONUSCO, and um, it has been mapped or represented with the plant CD10, represents MONUSCO, and then MONUSCO is a big mission that has different sectors. Here we see that MONUSCO has one sector that is called Bukabu, another sector that is Bunia, Entebbe, Goma, and Kinshasa. So these are the different sectors, and MONUSCO is able to purchase for the inventory of all these sectors. In other words, 
engineering, Monusco engineering represented by the fund center 10159 is able to purchase and to hold in inventory engineering items in all the sections, in Bukavu, in Bunia, in Entebbe, in Goma and Kinshasa. Same with ICT. ICT is a fund which is as a fund center which is 10158, but is not only in Goma or in Kinshasa. ICT holds inventory in all the sectors. Same with medical, etc. So this is so being a fund center. Uh, uh, common for all the sectors, a storage location is a subset uh, of the fund center in a specific sector, so it's more specific. So engineering is represented by the fund center 10159 across Monusco, but it's represented by the storage location in Bukabu uh, 11101. 110102 if for engineering in Bunia, 1103 for engineering in Entebbe, and so on. So let's say that a storage location is a um, subset of the fund center uh, in a mission. So it has um, a geographical meaning. Bukavu, Bunia, Entebbe, Goma, but also it um, represents the ownership, how many items um, a fund center holds in a storage location. If you want to know or explore more about the storage locations and funds management derivation, you can check a job aid uh, found in ISIC. So you can identify your mission and how your mission has been represented, has been mapped in Umoja. Um, there are some um, missions who are missing the creation of storage locations and therefore they are not able to procure for inventory against these storage locations that have not been created yet. For example, there are some missions that don't have an aviation storage location, etc., etc., but they will um, um, require to have an inventory in these um, technical units. So I wanted to tell you that it's possible to create the commission and change storage locations um, by an I need self service ticket. So should you miss a combination of storage location and fund in your mission needed to purchase for inventory, you can go into ISIC and check the master data maintenance site in this link. So here it is. If you click in this uh, storage location on master data in Bloop hyperlink, it will open a form which is an Excel and then you can create, request the creation of new storage location if this is the case. Um, let me show you where it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are in ISIC, so you will go into Master Data Maintenance. Yes, I will send the presentation afterwards. You're welcome. So we have a scenario where a mission is missing a storage location for aviation. Anyone can go into ISIC, logistics execution, storage location, master data. If you double click, you will be able. So please do not select consumption just because you don't have the appropriate storage location. Um, the problem will only grow and grow. So here we have different tabs 
one explaining the instructions and then request for new storage location, the commission and change of storage location. Okay. Uh, Elena, can I talk again quickly? I'm um, seeing some queries. Ah, okay, okay. Yes. I will send the... Um, ah. Emma, please go ahead. Okay, um, just a quick one um, before Elena moves on. As with the um, request for new storage locations and with the request for new product IDs, you need to fill in these forms correctly and completely. If you don't fill in all the information that is required on the form, <coughs> your process will be delayed. So just please ensure that you don't rush through things and they actually provide all the information required because the creation of a new storage location is not a simple process. So they need to have all the information, um, they need to get all the approvals in that are required and in order for this to proceed as quickly as possible for you, we need all the information at the first point and we don't want to have to keep chasing back to the missions for information that is required. So just as a reminder, thank you. Thank you, Emma. Um, so, let me... Put this in presentation mode. Yes, we covered this, how to create, how to request the creation of a new storage locations. I'm going to do a short demo on how to create shopping carts for inventory. You will see that it's and uncomplicated, so just uh, for you to refresh and to advise to your colleagues on uh, just to make two clicks and um, they will be correct. Um, if you set a, store, a shopping cart for inventory, it will never go wrong, but on the contrary, if you set a shopping cart for consumption, probably it will go wrong. So it's just better to follow always the same steps and there will not be uh, major issues. Okay, so I'm going to log in into Moja. And I'm going to log in in the training environment. So we're going to review what we just saw um, in the PowerPoint. Sometimes when we, we see it in real life, uh, we understand that it's much easier than when it is explained. environment Here it is, I'm logged in as requisitioner, so I decided that we need to purchase the item brand new from the vendor. I will click on create shopping cart. I'm 
and here it is. The process is um, well, you have different tabs that um, they have not changed since the, the commission of Galileo, but I would like you to pay attention to some other areas that become important. So default settings here, if we are raising a shopping cart that is going to be linked or charged or funded by the same, all the line items will be funded or assigned to the inventory of the same storage location in order to prevent for mistakes to happen, uh, we can set all the lines um, to the same storage location. In other words, I will click on set values. This applies to, the, to all the lines in the shopping cart. And here I see storage location. Currently is defaulted by transport GOMA. Okay, this user is mapped in order to be able to create shopping carts to multiple storage locations. And it's just here appearing Goma as the first one by default, randomly. So the user will have to click on the match box and to see all the available uh, storage location for which he has been mapped against. And in this case, in, this user is able to raise shopping cart for engineering in Entebbe, in Goma, ICT Goma, medical in Goma, supply Goma, and transport Goma. Should be the case that all the line items of this shopping cart are linked to the storage location transport Goma, we will select by clicking here on the gray box. And in this way, we make sure that uh, we prevent from errors to happen because the storage location is, um, select, is to be selected on a line item basis, not by document. But in these ways, it will apply to all the documents, all the, to, to all the lines. Then we will add an uh, add item. So you know there are different methods to add items. In this case, as I know it's not very common for transport to acquire uh, syringes, but for the syringe, for the purpose of um, this example, it's okay. We just need to create oh syringe, syringe. Ah, sorry for the spelling. No, okay. Needle. Well, I just need a product ID. That is not an asset. Okay. So here I have uh, needle, etc. So I see that now this the product ID is not just needle. It is quite specific. We have different types of needles. So this is important because in the future, if I requ I require Again, needles, I will be able to run the stock overview report and identify if the needle that I need is the needle that it's in the inventory or not. So we select the product ID. It's not a fixed asset. So we will go through the tabs. The first thing I want to tell you is that here we have a new tab called availability. This is new and is currently under development. The availability tab is to be used when, in, when uh, developed to be used in conjunction with the stock overview report and it will give you information of the items of the quantities of this product ID that are in inventory. So you may, so it will help you once in use to decide whether if you proceed with the shopping cart or not, or you need to request the full quantity or you are only to, re you will only request uh, a few of the quantities that you need and the others will be taken from the inventory, but it's not yet in use. So, um, we're going to move to the two most important tabs, which are the mandatory tabs, which are item data and account assignment. In the item data tab, okay, we have different uh, fields, but the most important and the newest one is I want you to pay attention to this order as direct material. Okay. 
Once we order, if, if you see, I click it and uh, I cannot unclick it. So the decision of ordering a direct material is not reversible. Me, what I mean by clicking order as direct material is that this item will be uh, put into the inventory of a storage location. It will not be set for consumption. Um, I know that the terminology could be a little bit confusing, what is direct material, but it means that item is set for inventory. And then we will be able to issue out from the inventory and uh, all the actions that I explained earlier. Purchasing group doesn't change, the quantity and price doesn't change, the same as usual, delivery date, location plant, and then storage location. Here you have, as I selected previously, in the default settings, the storage location transport goma, it is applied um, in all the lines of the shopping cart, and here it is, TPT goma. Um, Anyways, it's always um, recommendable to double check all the items that are uh, populated by default. Then, incoterm and location doesn't change as usual, etc. Um, we're going to see what are the impacts of uh, checking the, the option of order as direct material. Uh, please remind me, I mean, let me remind you that the defaulted option in Umoja is to have this uh, checkbox unchecked, so set for consumption. And um, as we said earlier, all the items need to be set for inventory. So this is an automatic check that you will have to do in your shop, in every line of your shopping carts. We move to the next tab, which is the account assignment, and we are going to click on the details. And here you have account assignment has been defaulted automatically to direct material. This is triggered, this direct material, is triggered by clicking here, order as direct material. So basically in this tab, what we need to do is to do some verifications that everything is correct. So it's direct material, the fund center is derived by the storage location. Monusco, TPT, fund center covers all the sections in Monusco, in transport, and the storage location that we selected covers is for GOMA specifically. So in this tab, we just need to do some verifications. Uh, the same for the fund and budget period. Everything is defaulted. Then we have the next tabs doesn't change with respect to 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 foundation of Umoja, and yeah, the rest remains as always as usual. So it seems that I completed, you know. I completed my shopping cart for inventory and now is ready to be approved. So basically this is the, the process for creating shopping carts that will uh, be inventoried and then it will, so the items we can follow, or we can transact with the items throughout their uh, life. Okay, I'm sharing the wrong monitor. So let's continue with the presentation. Come on. So let's let's see in the presentation what we just saw live. So that is a tip. Uh, if the requisitioner re wishes to create a shopping cart with more than one line, all of them assigned to the same storage location, what is the tip? Use the default settings as we have seen in the general data section in the shopping cart and select the storage location that will apply to all the lines in the shopping cart. This is what we just saw and uh, please share this information with your colleagues, requisitioners. So this is the way to do it. What else we saw? Only the first tabs are in use. So this is a screenshot of the item details. 
of a shopping cart. We will complete them from left to right. Um, it's and this is for every line. So mandatories are item data and account assignment tabs. Optionals are the rest. And then under development, as we saw, it's the availability tab. Once we check uh, order as direct material, the availability tab disappears. So in the first tab on the left, the item data tab, we have this is the screenshot. So we have, as we have seen, uh, we need to complete as usual quantity, price, delivery date, purchasing group, location, plant. So no changes. And then what is important is to, uh, if uh, I mean, to turn from uncheck to check the order as direct material field. And uh, the storage location must be populated and checked to ensure that it is correct. So these two fields under number two uh, become more and more important. So this is another tip. If you need to save the shopping cart and resume the creation later, please check the box prior saving the shopping cart. So we move to the second tab, which is mandatory as well, and it relates to the funding information of the line. So basically we said that this tab becomes uh, pre-populated and is just for verification and revision. First thing that we realize that is different is the account assignment category has defaulted to direct material. It's not cost center, fund center anymore. And this is because the order as direct material box being checked under the item data tab in the previous step. We check it, so it defaults. Plant and storage locations will derive the fund center, functional area, fund and budget period. We only need to verify, and I'm uh, underlying and in putting it in bold, verify that all the information is correct. Verify means not try to change. So, yes, um, some of us are trying to change the account assignment fund center fund at this stage, and it will bring errors. It's not possible. Probably what they need to do is to change the storage location. Okay. Okay. Let me see because I'm seeing someone in the chat. Good afternoon. I will forward the presentation to you. I just saw a question. Okay, I will read the questions um, once the presentation is finished and I will address all of them. So, what else? We saw the availability tab. You see, um, it's a tab in order to, to be checked together with the stock availability report, is this T code, to verify the availability of a material in a plant on the required date and then to decide to create a reservation or not. So it's useful in order to take decisions. Hold on. I want let me remove the chat. This is the availability tab and as we said, it will be another tool to use in conjunction with the stock of availability report prior creating and finalizing the shopping cart. And as we saw, the availability tab disappears once the order as direct material checkbox is marked. So we have another possible, another behavior of the system when using a fixed asset a product ID, meaning a product ID that begins with the numbers 21. Uh, a fixed asset, and we're going to see it in the system, 
a fix, uh, the definition of uh, a fixed asset doesn't change. It is according to IPSAS and uh, not being an expert, but uh, roughly I will tell you that it's items above $20,000 and some of them above $5,000. So what was before an asset is now an asset and begins, it has been codified with a number 21. How will the system behave when we select uh, product ID that begins with 21? We're going to see it because it's a little bit different both in the shopping carts and in the low value. Let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. This is the screen. I will select, for example, storage location Goma for all the lines. Okay, and then I will add an item, um, for example, Here, what I'm looking is a is for a 21 series product ID. These are 15, so oh, they are not good for my example. Let me scroll down. Okay, here we have some 21. So yes, X-ray machine. I'm going to order. Two X-ray machines. So in the details tab, let's see how to proceed. So we see the same. We we see that the availability availability tab is here, although it's not in use. And then we see the item data tab here. For the fixed assets, fixed assets by definition they will always go to inventory. So you must not check this checkbox. You have to leave this checkbox uh, unchecked, but they will go to inventory anyways. What you have to do is to complete the data, the quantity, the price, nothing changes in these regards, to select the appropriate storage location. This is important. And then selection of incoterm and location doesn't change. It's as usual as always. Okay. So if you pay attention, we haven't selected any, uh, we haven't checked the order as direct material. We are going to see what happens in the account assignment tab. And here it is more interesting. The first thing we notice is that the account assignment category has been defaulted to asset. Why? The system is identifying a product ID that begins with 21 and is able to identify that it corresponds to an asset. Here we have three possible options. So we can assign this asset to a fan center, an internal order or a project. So a fan center or if we are using a project, these, these assets are linked to projects funded by projects, we will be able to specify the internal order number or the WBSE number. For my scenario, I'm going to select the fan center for transport. So it's 10161. I click on enter. So Monusco TPT is funding this asset, this X-ray machine. And then this is not pre-populated. So in case of fixed assets, so pay attention. If you have a big shopping cart that has some fixed assets and non-fixed assets, you will have to um, play, I mean, pay close attention to each one of the lines, okay? Because the behavior is different. What else? Here we have um, the system is asking us to select what is the asset master class. There is a drop down list, drop down menu, but based on the product ID, product category, the system is giving me probably only one, maybe two options. In this case, based on the product ID that we selected, the system is able to suggest that the 
masterclass is medical equipment. And then what is important is that each quantity, each unit of asset that we are buying needs to have an, a unique asset, its own asset master record, its, its own field that it will be um, used um, throughout, um, in other modules throughout the process of, a, of an asset in order to do that. But the process begins at the stage of the shopping cart by creating the shell of the asset master create and assigning, uh, assigning a unique number to each quantity. How to do that? By clicking here. This is a mandatory step. C create asset master. Okay, I, cl I click it and the system returns a unique number. So this 47 number corresponding to X-ray machine corresponds to one of the two quantities marked in this shopping cart. Okay. So yes, I have a number for one, the first quantity, no, the first unit, but I need to assign a number to the second unit. How to do that? Okay, so do not use, please, any of these tabs. The only tab you have to do to use is at line tab. So you will be adding a line. Here you have 0, 01, 0, 02. Okay, quantity one, quantity one. So all, all this information that I'm pointing out with the mouse corresponds to the highlighted line. I need to select the second line and complete it with the details. Okay, so it's the same process. Assigning a fund center. I click on enter. And then a fund. 20 NUA stands for MONUSCO. And then, yes, to select the, the, the asset master class and to create a unique number that will be assigned to the second unit, let's say. Um, I'm clicking. Okay, this is the number that the quantity number two is going to be assigned to. So you see, please pay attention, um, this shopping cart has only one line, one line with quantity two. If we go to the item details for line item one, we see one tab that refers to the item data. We leave this in blank. We select the storage location. But in the account assignment, we have two lines. If we had uh, selected 10 X-ray machines, we will repeat the same action 10 times. Okay? Because the objective is to assign one um, number to each unit. Uh, for the rest, nothing changes. So what we will do is to order the shopping cart. Um, so now let's see in presentation what, what we just saw um, in a demo. So this is the presentation, how to work with Fix assets. Oh, one sec. Okay. So the system, as we said, the system is going to behave differently if we are racing in our shopping carts or in our low value. Uh, 21 series product ID corresponding to a fixed assets. Uh, two the rest of the product IDs. Okay? So at the stage of the shopping cart, we already identified what, I, what is a fixed asset. And this is required in order to facilitate the completion of the downstream processes. processes sorry. Each asset, each unit, meaning each quantity, 
must be assigned a unique, a unique asset master record number, as we have seen when creating the shopping cart. This is required, as said, for downstream activities. So one tip is do not select a 15 series uh, product ID and then try to change it into an asset in the account assignment information. This is not the correct procedure. This will return errors. What you need to do is to select directly a 21 series uh, product ID. We have seen that by selecting a 21 series product ID, the system then behaves differently. So please recommend your colleagues not to try to change at this stage um, product ID with uh, account assignment information and other things. So we have different tabs in the account assignment tab. Uh, the account assignment category is defaulted to assets and then we need to um, insert the fund center project or internal order that will be funding these assets. If it's an order of WEC, you usually are informed about what is the number that you have to insert. And then you need to insert the fund and the um, budget period is not defaulted as in the other product IDs. And then finally, you need to create, a, you need to select the asset master class and to create a unique asset master uh, record. In the account assignment tab, as we have seen, Omoja will create a unique number for the unit and populate the description field to the right of the asset record number. In our scenario was X-ray machine. And then if the shopping cart uh, line item is for quantity greater than one, you have to repeat the same operation for each unit, for each quantity. Okay. So you will select, um, you will click on add line and a new line appears for each unit and then you have to work on it and populate the, the data as in the previous step. And the same um, until you complete for all the quantities. Okay, so now we're going to see how to create a low value PO let me see if there are comments. One sec. I'm seeing some questions of some of you who says that they don't see the order as direct material checkbox. This is because you are missing the role SA.02. What you need to do is to contact your um, security liaison office and uh, request the role um, of SA.02. Okay. Um, the same, you may not be assigned to, a, you are missing maybe a, a storage location that you should have. So please go into the, in ISIC, into the job aids to first of all, to check what is the structure in Umoja of your mission, your plant and the different storage locations and analyze if you need to request the creation of a new storage location. And then you should be mapped against this uh, particular storage location. This is something you need to uh, contact your security liaison office in order to make sure that you have been um, given the proper role, your mission has the proper structure, and then you are assigned uh, to create the shopping cart and low value for the proper storage location. Okay, I'm going to continue and I will review some other questions in a while, in a few minutes. 
so low values okay low values for inventory mm, the usage of low values should be kept to the minimum meaning that it's it's a procurement process that's, that uh, <laughs> Uh, doesn't go through through the procurement okay so it's basically for um, exceptional cases where there is no system contract in place and the requirement is less than 10,000 and is not uh, let's say repetitive so um, yes um, sometimes it's um, um, there is some there is confusion about the fact that you need something uh, right away with the concept of setting the item for consumption and the usage of low value for that purpose. But they are three different concepts and they should be used correctly. Okay. Um, so having said this, I'm going to go to a training environment and hopefully I can raise a low value for inventory. So. I'm going to log in. Okay, this is my credentials. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I'm not able to see any presentation, nothing on the screen. Just one sec. Okay, let me share my screen again. Um, so I need, this is a super user that has all the roles, um, procurement. Let's imagine that this is a low value acquisitioner. So we will create, click on create purchase order. We're going to select the template of the purchase order that corresponds to low value. Here you see uh, direct PO, low value. Direct PO meaning for inventory. And here, and it doesn't change, we have some fields that have a red asterisk and we need to complete. Is the supplier, the requester, it will be you or yes. And then it's the location. The location is important because the location is going to define what are the storage locations available. Okay. So what I will do is to use the, the matchbox 
and select a location where the items are going to be received. Okay, this is UN headquarters in New York. Okay, we select the location. Um, supplier requested, as I mentioned, nothing changes. It was uh, mandatory in the past, and now with implementation of the commissioning of Galileo and implementation of inventory and warehouse, they are still the same uh, mandatory fields. The same applies to the header, no? the financial rules. It was mandatory in the past, it is mandatory now. Um, currency, etc. So all the non-mandatory and mandatory fields uh, we need to complete the low value, but we are not going through all these fields. We are just going to focus on adding an item. Um, so I will look for Ah, product category. Okay, let me try to. I added a serialized item, and now um, it is a little bit different because. Uh, order as direct material doesn't appear, doesn't uh, show as a checkbox, but it shows as a bottom in the general data. Okay, so instead of item overview, we have uh, general data, and then we have order as direct material bottom. So what I will do is to um, click on it, and once we click on it, we see that it becomes grayed out and then we receive a message. This is a direct procurement material. So this item that is going to be purchased through a low value acquisition, it is going to be stored in the, in the in, it is going to be in the inventory of the storage location, it's going to be serialized and it's going to be assigned to a person and to a functional location. Uh, what else? Another thing I wanted to tell you is the storage location. Here it is. We have seen how important it is, the correct selection of the storage location. So it will uh, default different options. We need to select the correct one. As I selected location New York uh, previously, now I'm seeing all the storage locations that are mapped against um, um, New York. So um, um, let's select one of them and then we are going to move into the account assignment information, details. You see the account assignment category is direct material, nothing changes. The fund center is, de is derived on the storage location. The same happens with the fund and the budget period. Okay, so this is the process of creating a low value for an item that is going to be inventoried and I mean for all basically all the items purchased by using a low value acquisition should follow this process, should be um, set as direct material. This is the process. Now let's go into see the presentation um, and stop sharing. And let's see what says. And then we will address some of your comments that I, that I have seen in the chat. Low value for inventory. So the same as we said, it 
the behavior of the system will be different if we select a 21 series, series uh, product ID or not. But what we have seen is that we have to select the product ID and to click on the button order as direct material. It's not a checkbox, it's a button. Then this button becomes disabled and the following message is displayed. This is a direct procurement material in the item details section. So in this way, we can double check that we are doing it correctly. Select the storage location where the item will be inventoried using the drop down field. All storage locations linked to the location specified in the overview tab are available in the drop down list. So they will depend, I mean, we are working in a mission, so we'll, we will always select the location that corresponds to our mission and we will select the storage locations available for our mission, basically. So we will check the account assignment tab. We will make sure, we will verify that the account assignment category has been automatically changed to direct material and the fund, fund center details, budget period, etc., have been derived and it's correct. So we don't need to input any information. Um, so we, with this, we, we are almost at the end of our session. This is just a reminder on what is the support model, uh, how, what meaning, in other words, what are the um, tools and resources available to help you in your uh, transactions. So the first thing you have to do if you encounter any issue is to go into iSeq and to find job baits and training guides. And then you have to ask your local process expert, your LPE, for assistance. If uh, still the issue is not uh, resolved, you will move to step number three, which is to contact your local service desk by email and raise an I need request. This is basically what um, this is uh, what you need to do if you find issues. I recommend you to go into OISIC and to read the user guide called Umoja Requisitioning and also a job aid called Raising LBAs for Inventory from page 6 onwards. There is also LMS um, CBTs courses that are recommendable on requisitioning and low value acquisitions. And also please visit regularly I seek for updates as new job aids are um, published on a regular basis. Uh, just to finish, I would like to, for those of you who are not familiar with the with I seek and where are the resources in I seek, uh, I don't want to miss the opportunity to of uh, showing it to you could be useful for you and for your colleagues. So um, share screen. I'm sharing now this screen. This is in ISIC. Uh, basically, you go to ISIC and then, well, I always follow the same path is to go to Moja on ISIC and to find here the job aids, the training, and then a material master reference where we can, we can find the latest updates on product ID and how to request new storage locations. Everything is here. This is the list of uh, job aids for source to acquire. This is the job aid on how to raise low values for inventory. And this is uh, the link that you need to go in order to request new storage locations. And here is where you can check, and this is dated as of 23rd of February, check uh, the latest additions to the um, material and service master uh, catalog. So I'm going to unmute you, so I want to hear if you have um, any comments. Hopefully I can hear you. So yes, it is, and I'm, I'm also going to go through. 
chat to see some of your comments. I don't hear anything. Can you hear me? <laughs> 